Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Bridge Builders of Diversity. Uh, today's topic, we're gonna to be talking about handicap accessible bathrooms. But first, favorite. your favorite. Wow. My favorite. Favorite? They're pretty cool, aren't they? Cool, well, they are cool. They yeah. are cool. All right, before we get started on that, I'm Sherry. I'm a mother of a child with Down syndrome and this is Roberta. And I'm a special education teacher. Um, we love to bring you topics about um, disabilities and how people with disabilities can enhance our lives. So we're yeah, we going to do talk all about topics on disabilities. So if you like to uh, a topic on any type of disability, put it down in the um, comments below and we will respond. And while you're commenting, you can hit that bell notification, subscribe, like, um, and leave, it, leave us a comment. Tell us, uh, tell us what you think of handicapped bathrooms. Yes. So Roberta, where do handicapped bathrooms come from? What is the handicap, origin? The handicapped bathrooms came from the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. Under Section 504, it was illegal to discriminate against anyone if you were an organization that received any kind of federal funding. So that, that covers like schools, medical facilities, um, nursing homes, uh, municipal buildings. So in order for things to be accessible, that means you have to have a, a larger bathroom, a bathroom that a wheelchair will fit in, a bathroom where someone can do say a sliding transfer. Um, that, that's where it came from. And that has brought the joy of handicapped bathrooms into our lives, the requirements uh, of the law apply to employers and organizations that receive federal funding. However, many states regulate that public places need to have handicap accessible bathrooms as well, again, under that section 504. That's pretty cool because we all use the handicap bathroom. I know being a mother when my kids were younger, they're very useful because you have extra space. Um, to go to, in there with them and help yeah. them with their training and Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've been so grateful for the handicap stall in a bathroom because I've had to change my clothes in a public place. I'm on my way somewhere else and I have to change out of my work clothes into ex exercise clothes or um, more appropriate clothes for where I'm going. Um, I've got the space in the handicap stall. Um, and sometimes they even put the changing station in the handicap stall as well for moms. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's wonderful when you have a baby or a toddler and there isn't a changing table to have that extra space and that privacy in a handicap mm -hmm. stall. Um, I also had to use a handicap bathroom after I broke my legs. I was in a wheelchair for three months. I was a member of the disability community for that time. And I realized full, full on impact of the importance of a handicapped bathroom. And even after I got out of a wheelchair, I was still using the larger stall when I was in crutches because there was room for me and my crutches in the stall. Mm -hmm. So it, when you think about it, don't you know that when things are accessible for people with disabilities, they benefit- Everyone. Everyone. Anyone ever try to take a stroller up a set of stairs? You're grateful right. for that handicap ramp, aren't you? Well, thank the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 under Section 504. Yes, because even as people age and stuff like that, those ramps are helpful. Even my son who has um, low muscle tone, uh, handicap ramps have come in handy because he can be, even still today, can be a little shaky on stairs. Mm. Um, so those ramps uh, come in handy. As do the handicap accessible bathrooms. Yes. Again, when 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 we make accommodations for the disabled, everyone benefits. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. And that also goes along with kids who learn differently. If we taught to kids who learn differently, everyone can learn and everyone's included. But when we just teach to the way typical people learn, 20 percent roughly of the population gets left out. Right. And there's another group of people that are that benefit from Section 504 is um, children with learning dis dis differences like ADHD or or um, hearing loss without any other disabilities. Um, students who uh, might have low vision, 
those accommodations are provided under Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. <gasps> And it benefits everyone because like advances in different teaching modalities have, have helped with interventions with students and, and maybe prevented them from qualifying for an IEP, which sounds negative, like, oh, I prevented you from qualifying for an IEP. But really what it meant is I was able to close the gap in your learning using this teaching style that was developed for a child with a disability. Yep. So again, we're we're all benefiting from from the, the accommodations that are made for people with disabilities. If you like our content, please like and subscribe to our channel and share our video. And um, again, if you have any um, comments or any topic on disabilities, please comment down below. And if it's a topic we're not familiar with, we will certainly research it because Roberto and I like to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> we do, we do. We, and we love finding out um, just how beneficial it is to include everyone. Absolutely. Inclusion is a good thing. All Inclusion right, guys. What was, what's that, Roberta? Inclusion benefits everyone. Absolutely. All right, everyone. We appreciate you. Thank Have you so much. We love you. Love you.